All right. Shout out Skatano for sending me this entire script. <laughs> oh, I might have to drink water periodically through this. I am absolutely fucking plastered. Right. You listening? This is the entire FNAF. FNAF? FNAF? FNAF lore in one go. You listening? Okay. Basically, there's this guy named William that moved to England to a town called, oh, that moved from England to a town called Hurricane with his wife and three kids. That meets this guy named Henry, and the two of them form a friendship and open up a diner and pizzeria called Freddy's Fazbear Diner. Well, F Fred Bear's Family Diner. Now, the money's tight, so to save on cash, he and Henry come up with these animatronic mascots that can be cranked open to work as suits. Seems pretty smart, right? Wrong, dummy! See, as the spring locks get loose on these suits, they turn into animatronics and cut, crush the person in them. Anyways, getting ahead of myself here. Basically, this William guy's bad news. See, one day, Henry's daughter Charlie is having a birthday party at the diner. The other kids are mean, though, and they lock her outside. What does William do when he sees this? He freaking drags her out into the alley and kills her. That's what he does. Now, Henry built this safety puppet to watch over his daughter, but the puppet was stuck inside a box while this was happening. Oh, God. Oh, that's quite a burp. When the puppet gets out, it goes outside to try and protect her, but it's raining, so the freaking animatronic breaks down too. So what happens is that Charlie's spirit actually inhabits the animatronic puppet. And buddy, that's just the tip of the iceberg. See, William's older son, Michael, is a real jerk to his younger son, Evan. On Evan's birthday in 1983, they go to the diner, and Michael actually shoves Evan into Fredbear's mouth. Freaking crazy, right? So the spring locks fail, and Fredbear chomps Evan's head, putting him into a coma and killing him a few weeks later. There, this there is a breaking point for William. The guy starts putting on the spring bonnie suit and luring kids into the back room. Once he gets back there, he freaking kills them. Once he gets them back there, he freaking kills them. He does this five times before getting caught. The thing is, though, nobody can find the bodies. So William gets let off the hook. As it turns out, he hides the bodies inside the animatronics. Now, Charlie, since her spirit is still inside the puppet, she starts putting the kids' spirits into the animatronics that they were stuffed in. Wow, that's quite a skill. So right now, the puppet, Chica the Chicken, Bonnie the Bunny, Freddy Fazbear, Foxy the Pirate, an unused Golden Freddy Fazbear, and the original Fredbear all have the ghosts of children in them. After this missing children incident, William gets fired from his own company. That doesn't stop him, though. His new solo company, Afton Robotics. He starts work for this new company called... Oh, wait, no. He creates this solo company called Afton Robotics. Starts work for this new company called Circus Babies Pizza World. There, William starts making these robots that are designed to kill kids. Crazy, right? Well, as it turns out, William figured out how to be immortal. See, when kids die, they produce this material called Remnant. You can basically use this Remnant stuff to keep your soul inside of something. William figures this out after killing those first five kids. So now he starts trying to use it for his own good. Problem is, even though his younger son is dead and his older son has moved out, William still has his daughter Elizabeth with him. William makes this really cool animatronic called Circus Baby. <laughs> wow, what a name. Who can dance, sing, make ice cream, do a whole bunch of cool other stuff. What? Can they pass my stats class for me, please? I really need to pass that class. When his daughter Elizabeth gets too close to Baby, her child capturing mechanism activates. So now that two of William's three kids are dead by his own hand, William pretty much loses it here. What? I thought he lost it earlier. He tells his wife... And, oh, he kills his wife. Oh my god. Wow, that went from 0 to 100. Actually, no, it was already at 100. It went from 100 to 100. He kills his wife and puts her into another machine called Bellera. This doesn't last very long, though. See, Circus Baby's Pizza World closed down before it even had the chance to open. Now William's all alone and on the loose. Now it's 1987. There's a new Fazbear Pizza in a new location. They all have the old suits with the dead kids in them back in the back room. But now they've got all these new animatronics that are not only safer, but also have facial recognition software to detect criminals. What? This is 1987. How do they how? Okay. This is all in case William comes back, you see. See, I told you he was trouble. So anyway, since none of the Springlock suits are at this location, William instead uses this Golden Freddy suit since it's broken, unused, and mostly empty. He kills another five kids which go into Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, Toy Chica, Toy Foxy, which we'll call The Mangle, and Balloon Boy. Oh, should I mention, Charlie's here again too, for some reason. Unlike the rest of the 1983 animatronics, which are unused in the back, Charlie's puppet is still used by the prize counter. So anyways, this is the second missing children inc incident. Now the place gets closed down, but before they do that, they have one last party on November the 13th, 1987. I 
freaking lose my frontal lobe to mango. What? Mm -mm. I freaking lose my frontal lobe to mango and die a few weeks later, but that's not important. What's important here is that the new restaurant closed down. So now it's sometime after 1987. William somehow gets a message out to his son, Michael, that his sister and mom are trapped inside some animatronics at the new closed down Circus Babies Pizza World. And that he needs to set them free. Since the whole building is automated, is automated, they think that he's an employee. So Michael works at the building for a week while the building is attempting to reopen until he gets tricked by the animatronics into getting scooped. What? What the fuck is scooped? What? Scoopity scoop. Scoopity poop. I don't know. Ice cream. Poopin. Shitin. Wait, no. Ice cream. Scoopin. Shitin. Poopin. See? What happens is that during the week, all the robots in the facility tear themselves apart and reform themselves into a giant mass called Ennard. Wow, I'm naming my son that. Ennard brings Michael to the scooper where he gets injected with Remnant. Then his organs get scooped out, and Ennard uses him as a skin suit in order to escape the facility. After the robots escape and Michael is reanimated as a walking corpse, he vows to find his father and end all this suffering. The first place he tries is a new Freddy's Fazbear's Pizza that opens in 1993. Wait, did I really skip over the bite of 87? Bite of 87? 86? 87? Fuck, I'm gonna fail my exam! No! This reopening is the original location of the, Fred Bears, uh, the Fred Bears Family Diner and uses the original cast of Freddy, Foxy, Chica, and Bonnie. Well, it's like a 1980s sitcom. They even refit Golden Freddy, but they never use him. Since Michael was blacklisted after getting his brother killed, he uses a fake name, Mike Schmidt. Wait, what the hell? Oh, that's not good. I, I know someone IRL named Mike Schmidt, actually. That's really bad. Um, to get a job at the new place. However, after a week of working, with all the animatronics trying to kill him, thinking that he's his father, he gets, he gets fired and the place shuts down. Michael wouldn't find his father until 2023 with Fazbear's Fright. But before that happens, we need to talk about what happened to William. See, William does come back to the original location. He knows that all the kids are alive inside the animatronics, and he can't have that now, can he? So he goes to the building after it's been shut down to try and dismantle them. See, all Fazbear locations include a hidden room that is off the map and invisible to animatronics for storage. As also for the Springlock failure victims to bleed out so, he can, so the children don't see it. William hides in the room, coming out to dismantle the animatronics until he tears down all five of them. However, once he does this, the ghosts manifest, just like how I'm manifesting right now. I have drank way too much alcohol tonight. And attack William, forcing him to hide inside the spring Bonnie suit that's been rotting in the room since 1983. Think about that. 1983. He puts it on and laughs at them, but when the spring locks fail and he gets crushed... Wait. Wait. What? Oh, William puts it on and laughs at them, but the spring locks fail and he gets crushed. Wait, William's dead. Since William's been injecting himself with Remnant for years, he comes back to life after getting crushed by the suit. But he doesn't have any will of his own, being locked in the room until 2023. Is it not next year? Oh god! Wait, are we gonna get... Is the apocalypse gonna be caused by freaking William from F FNAF? From FNAF? Huh, okay, never mind. <sighs> been an honor serving with you gentlemen. In, 19, you know, in 2023, an amusement park opens up a scary attraction called the Fazbear Fright, which uses a bunch of old Fazbear artifacts from the old locations as a horror attraction. But don't forget, in 1998, The Undertaker threw mankind off hell in a cell 16 feet through an announcer's table. <clears throat> they find this old spring Bonnie suit in the hidden room and transport him to Fazbear's, fight, or Fra Fazbear's Fright, where Michael is working. Wow! Michael's been working there. This is the moment he's been waiting for. After a week of working at the location, Michael uses the faulty wiring in the building as an excuse to set fire to it. King William, once and for all, wait, killing William once and for all, <laughs> and freeing the remaining trapped souls, who have also been haunting Michael for the week he was working there. Or so he thought. Man, Michael, you really gotta figure out your priorities. You've been working... I feel like if everything's been trying to kill you at pizza restaurants the last 30 years of your life, you should consider maybe not working at a pizza restaurant. Work at like a Taco Bell or something. What? Bro. Or so he thought. As it turns out. Oh god. Number 15. Killing Michael. Wait, no, sorry. Number 15. Killing William at a pizza parlor. The last thing that you want in your, in your pizza parlor pizza is somebody's dead mass, masticated. Wait, masticated? Macerated body. But as it turns out, William survives the fire. William survives the fire, rebuilds himself with the leftover parts that were inside the building, and escapes to kill some more. Now we have the puppet, Ennard, and William all off in their own in the world. Ennard gets tired of Elizabeth controlling them, so they kick Elizabeth out, and she rebuilds herself as a new version of Baby, now called Scrap Baby. Whew, that's my rapper name. Ennard then dons a new mask and calls himself Molten Freddy, who also happens to have the spirits of the five children for the toy animatronics in it now. 
Oh, God, another burp. This is where Henry steps in. Once Henry learns of the suffering that's been happening, he devises a plan to bring the animatronics all together in one place so he can destroy them and free them all, and creates an animatronic called Lefty. What about Right Shark? Which he then uses to capture his daughter. When Michael finds out about all of this, he goes to the new fake pizzeria, it's just like fake taxi, and brings all the animatronics back together. Once they're all there, Henry locks the building and burns it down. All of it, with him and Michael still in it, freeing their remaining souls of Elizabeth, Charlie, William's wife, all the remaining children inside of Molten Freddy. After this, William's soul is sent to hell, where the souls of the children he tortured get to torture him for all eternity. Or so they think. See, sometime before being killed, William uses his genius to scratch his consciousness and memories into a binary code into some of the electrical components of the animatronics. The problem with Henry's plan is that Fazbear's Entertainment wasn't all in his own hands, and was actually still running as its own company at this point. See, at some time during the events of these games, an anonymous game developer was hired by Fazbear Entertainment to create the FNAF games as a way of making the real story seem like fiction. After that, they hired a different company called Silver Parasol Games to create the Fetty Fazbear Virtual Experience, you know, VR, to make it seem as if the previous games were rogue and to double discredit the real stories of children getting killed. Fake news! The problem, though, is that Fazbear Entertainment provided Silver Parasol with some computer chips to scan in order to make the animatronics more realistic. When they do this, William's consciousness code is brought back into the game basically bringing him back to life in the video game. During development, this robot William, called Glitch Trap, programs itself to be able to take over a tester's body, essentially bringing William Afton back to life. William is able to control a developer named Jeremy, but he decides Jeremy isn't a good candidate. So he controls Jeremy and makes him kill himself using a guillotine paper slicer. Glitch Trap tries to control the unnamed player of the game, but the player manages to defeat him and lock him away. However, before this happens, Glitchtrap finds a host named Vanessa and decides to use her. Uh, for what? After the Freddy Fazbear virtual experience, as well as an added Halloween DLC, Fazbear Entertainment then commissions the creation of a giant mall called Fazbear Mega Pizzaplex. During the time that Mega Pizzaplex was running, multiple animatronics were switched around and the tragedy started again. But before we go into the events that transpired here, we have to talk more about Vanessa and another individual known as Patient 46. That's the guy that comes before Agent 47 from Hitman. He's like Agent 47's disappointing cousin. Patient 46 appears to be a tech-savvy genius, but is also at the same time a child. According to how they are treated and referred to by the various therapists that we hear their sessions from, which is clear that Patient 46 and Vanessa are two different people. It is unknown for a certain who Patient 46 is. What is known is that Patient 46 spends a lot of time at the pizza plex before the events of the security breach and helps reprogram the system, implying that they are working with Vanny, Vanessa's alter ego while under the control of William. What else is known is that Patient 46 lied about whatever happened to their family, and the 16th tape reveals that they actually had a great childhood. Vanessa is also known to have a terrible father named Bill, according to tape 3. God damn it, William. Apparently, Vanessa's dad forced her to, to, to lie during a custody hearing between him and her mother, leading to her mother doing something afterwards, likely committing suicide. Anyways, the events preceding security breach include at least nine more missing people... What? Likely all children, as well as multiple missing therapists who were likely killed by Vanny. At some point, Bonnie the Bunny is replaced by a new animatronic named Montgomery Gator. These names, dude. He sounds like, he sounds like a WWE wrestler. Montgomery Gator at Hell in a Cell. WWE Raw. This happens following a night where Bonnie went down to Monty's golf course, and then there was unseen afterwards, and then was unseen afterwards. Many speculate that Monty may have killed Bonnie or dismantled him in order to make his way into the main cast, but we do not know for sure. What we do know, however, is that Monty took over Bonnie's role in the main cast. Roxanne Wolf, another new animatronic, who also took over Foxy's role. But there's no given explanation for this. One night, after most of the animatronics have been reprogrammed, Glamrock Freddy, Freddy, the newest version of Freddy Fazbear, malfunctions and shuts down on stage. When he wakes up, he learns that he was put into low power mode, <laughs> just like my phone, likely freezing him from the reprogramming agent for the uh, patient 46, patient 46 did to everyone else. Also, when he wakes up, a boy named Gregory reveals himself to be hiding inside of his chest cavity. What? Oh, yeah, I get it. Okay. Gregory is a homeless orphan of an unknown relation to anyone else during the events of Security Breach. Some have speculated that Patient 46 is Gregory, but there seems to be lore differences between the two characters that conflict. Others believe that Gregory is an animatronic himself, as his, eyes and, as his hair and eyes are noticeably different to Vanessa. And the book Tales from the Pizzaplex includes an animatronic that looks like a human child and is about the same size as Gregory, to be fair. What more? 
Gregory's vision seems to distort at times, implying that his eyes are cameras that are receiving interference. However, none of this is known for sure. Gregory and Glamrock Freddy find that the mega pizza plex is built on top of the fake restaurant that was used to lure William Afton in years prior. Vanny, using Vanessa's body, located William's corpse and reanimated him using a recharge station stolen from the pizza plex. William plans to control all the animatronics in the pizza plex remotely and begins to kill the children again, but Gregory and Freddy stop him. Wow. The last we see of William Afton is him being grabbed by the spirits of the recently killed nine people inside a large machine known as the Blob. Whoa, the Blob. The game canonically ends with Gregory and Freddy escaping the Pizza Plex and relaxing on the hill. It is likely that with the destruction of the Pizza Plex, Vanessa is freed from Vanny, but we do not know for sure. And this is where our story ends for now. Eventually, there'll be more DLC and updates for Security Breach, but until that happens, this has been the entire Five Nights at Freddy game lore. Study the spreadsheet for the test, and study because the test is in 43 minutes. All right, people. Thank you. And good night.